What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv, video audio stuff, and in this video I want to definitively answer the question, which camera is better in low light, the Sony a7S III, which I'm filming on at the moment, or the a7 IV? The a7S III, of course, unofficially has a dual native ISO, but then the a7 IV has a 6K downscale to 4K, so which one will be better in real world situations for shooting in low light? Will the a7S III be dethroned as the low light king? Everything, as usual, is timestamped below, so just skip the bits you want, no worries. I now have a Patreon for this channel, it's non-profit, the idea being that any funds from Patreon go back into the channel, I buy equipment, do unbiased reviews, and then I give the equipment away to my backers. It's really inexpensive to be a backer, just the cost of a cup of coffee, so if you enjoy these videos and you like gear giveaways, do check it out, it's linked below. First off, they're both great, obviously. We're talking about two very modern full-frame sensors, both backside illuminated, both have internal noise reduction. So keeping things in perspective, low light wise, we've never had things better and I'm very grateful for this technology existing. With that in mind, let's now go through the differences between the two sensors. The a7S III has a 12 megapixel sensor giving us 4K with a one-to-one -one pixel readout, and that means that with the minimum amount of pixels required, in theory, the pixels are gonna be large, and that's a good thing for low light shooting. The a7 IV, however, gives us a 33 megapixel sensor, which downscales 6K signal to 4K, and many would consider this the superior setup of the two, and certainly from my testing when it comes to things like detail, it is, but it falls down when it comes to things like rolling shutter and in the same vein, frame rate options. The question is, is downscaling or having larger pixels better for low light shooting? Let's get testing. I shot some super interesting footage here. It's the same lens for both camera, just with the lens cap on. Using S-Log3 and then in post, I just added a conversion LUT, and then I've boosted the footage by quite a few stops, around five stops. So starting off with the two cameras base ISOs, which are ISO 640 for the A7S III and ISO 800 for the A7 IV. We can see some noise for both, but trust me, I've boosted this so much. In the real world, these are both gonna look super clean. And to my eye, the a7 IV looks better, finer grain. With a lower native ISO, I would have thought the a7S III would have less noise. And then when I match ISOs at ISO 800, things are looking pretty similar. And then stepping up a stop to ISO 1600, and we can really see some difference with the a7S III looking definitely worse. And I really hope this translates over YouTube. Stepping up another stop to ISO 3200, and again, really not that good news for the a7S III. And look how clean that a7 IV is, wow. Increasing another stop to 6400, and that a7S III is looking pretty noisy. This really shows how the gain staging is just so different on these two cameras. As soon as we get to ISO 12800, the scales tip the other way. The a7 IV still looking really clean, but dear God, the a7S III, once you get over ISO 12800, it definitely has the edge. And here you can see for the rest of the way, the a7S III has the advantage at 25,600 to 51,200, which of course is the native maximum of the a7IV, and then to the native maximum of the a7S III, 102,400. Next, I wanted to find out at what ISOs these cameras become unusable. It's all very well looking at lens cap footage, but that doesn't give us any context. So I went out and I got some context. So let's say you're shooting in the evening and you're starting to lose the light. Your lens is already wide open and you have to start pushing that ISO. Let's see how far these cameras can go whilst maintaining the same exposure level until things look unacceptable. Here you can see the two cameras at their native ISOs. And just to say I matched exposure levels, I matched white balance, so I have no idea why the a7S III looks a little bit more vibrant and maybe with a touch more contrast. But stepping the a7S III up to ISO 800 so that we can continue our ISO increases in a synchronized fashion, both look absolutely fine, noise not a problem at all. 
it's going to be interesting to see how each camera deals with its colour as we step up to the higher ISO levels. I'm balancing the ISO with shutter speed, so every time I increase the ISO, I increase the shutter speed. At ISO 1600, they both look fairly good still, although I've seen a slight desaturation, kind of a dulling of the colour from the a7 IV. I haven't seen that from the a7S III yet. At 3200, we're seeing maybe a touch more noise, but nothing that anyone should be worried about. This is just completely fine to use. This would not end up looking noisy. At 6400, I am now convinced that I can see a little more noise from the a7S III. But you remember how much noise we were seeing on the lens cap test? And how I went on to say in the real world it would not be this bad. Well, this is a real world shot and just look at it. As before, stepping up to ISO 12800 sees the a7S III having virtually no noise at all. The a7 IV seems to lean more and more into kind of muddy magenta as we climb the ISOs. And now that we're at ISO 25600, this is the point in which I would say, with the a7 IV, I'd want to stop before I get to this point. And my limit with the a7S III would be around this point, maybe a touch higher if I really needed to. At 51,200, I would deem these both unusable, but notice how much less detail you'll find on the a7 IV. I was really surprised by this. It's just mushy, and the a7S III surprisingly has maintained much more. I wonder why that is. And then standing alone in its unusable glory is the a7S III with its highest native ISO of 102,400. Pretty gross, pretty unusable. Finally, I wanted to starve each camera of light just to see what would happen when we really push the ISOs up. And I've gone straight to ISO 800 and things are dark. I've just got one candle. At ISO 1600, you can see the color checker behind the candle starting to emerge. And it's kind of the same story as before. Going to the ISO 3200, you can see the a7S III definitely more noisy than the a7 IV. And then really pretty bad at 6400. And once again, the script is flipped as soon as we hit 12,800, where the a7S III looks clean. Strangely, in this test, the a7 IV actually really kept up with the a7S III at these higher ISOs. It was the case at ISO 25,600 and then 51,200, where things looked fairly even. When you consider this is just candlelight and a lens at f11, these are both just really impressive cameras. And as before, we have the a7S III at its high ISO of 102,400. And have you ever used this? I'm curious, definitely let me know. So with all of this in mind, I wanted to find out which camera was better for which situation. So let's gather up everything we've learned in this video and draw some conclusions. So in my testing, the a7 IV was cleaner between ISO 800 and 10,000. However, the a7S III took over and was cleaner from ISO 12,800 and up. I would say the points that they became unusable, the a7 IV at 16,000 plus and the a7 III at 25,600 plus. Interestingly, the a7 IV lost color at the higher ISOs and the a7S III much less so. So that's another thing to consider. Noise is one thing, but lost color, that's a whole other beast. And then there's detail. And from my testing, the a7 IV started to lose some detail from ISO 6400, whereas the a7S III, not really until 25,600, and that's because of its higher native ISO. And then on to different shooting situations. And firstly, outdoor shooting, and it kind of makes no difference which camera you use because usually you're trying to stop light entering the lens using ND filters and whatnot so that you can keep the cameras at their native minimum ISOs until you run out of light. And then any situation with lighting, again, it doesn't matter. You're gonna want to be at their native minimums. And then something like indoor events with no dedicated video lighting like weddings. And again, I've got to give it to the a7S III because of that higher native ISO. I'd say as soon as you run out of natural light, go straight to that higher native ISO and you're going to be in good shape. And I shouldn't have to say it, but this is more just to ward off the comments. So just to reiterate, they are both great. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I want to hear from you. Have you had similar experiences to me with these two cameras? Definitely let me know in the comment section below. I've now made hundreds of videos about audio and video on this channel, of which YouTube has recommended this one for you to watch next, and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.